Are there advantages to aging? Yes, I am Debbie Jo Horton and welcome to Advantages to Aging. Join my guests and I as we discuss aging and what makes for a healthy lifestyle, which results in a quality life. Thank you for joining me today. Welcome to another episode of Advantages to Aging. And today I have with me Shelly McLean, who is an LPN. She's actually the founder and executive director of Aspen Care and Health Journals. She has a lifelong passion for helping others through their health care crisis, and that's led her to create Aspen Care. She served the community for over 30 years on a variety of different things, but for the last three years, she's been a licensed practical nurse, and these experiences have helped her to develop a vast understanding of the Canadian healthcare system, and her goal, and the goal of her staff, is to evaluate the standards of care both in Canada and in the United States and become advocates for our seniors. Welcome to the show, Shelley. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to to learn more about you and be able to put your knowledge into work as mm. as I get older, and I'm sure my listeners are going to feel the same. So what actually got you started in the healthcare career and in your entrepreneurial journey? Well, you know, sometimes we have a crisis in our own family and our own life that makes you make a change in your own life. And for me, it was the passing of my brother about 12 years ago and his journey that I was involved in from the moment he was diagnosed and then finally when he passed away. And I realized at that time while I was working with him, both in the private health care and the public health care here in Canada, that there was a need for someone to always be there with him to be able to hear what they were doctors were saying. And so that we could process for him and then share that information with him afterwards. And so Shortly after his passing, I left my bookkeeping job in the oil and gas business, and I went and became a healthcare aide. So I think in the U.S. it's called a personal assistant support worker, and I just continued on with my education. And as soon as I was able to get that certificate, I then opened up my Aspen Care, and I started doing private care for individuals living in Calgary. Most of my clients have been palliative, so um, I am a palliative healthcare uh, aide and also an LPN. I'm sorry to hear of your loss. Mm-hmm. I understand losing a brother. So great that you are able to take something that can be so devastating to so many and, and bring something positive about because of it. And bless you for choosing palliative care. So how can health journaling, we talked a little bit um, before the show about journaling, how can that contribute to one's aging journey? Oh, that's a great question. I think that when somebody is in a medical crisis or they've been diagnosed with a new um, illness, uh, they need to be able to process it. And journaling allows them to process how they're feeling initially, and then also to go back and refer to those initial comments or diagnoses, and then keep track of everything. What I have found in my experience when working with anybody who is living with a disease is that they tend to have pieces of paper all over their house, and they've got blood pressure um, uh, results, and they've got their temperature, and then they've got their medication, and then but they don't have it together. And what I found is that when I walked in, um, I would look at all these pieces of paper and say, can I just put it all together for you? And it's a great tool to communicate. And so when somebody can communicate what they're feeling and how they're feeling and what medications making them feel a different way, it allows the doctors to come in and say, wow, you're very attentive to what you need. And maybe I can help you get to another point. And for seniors, I think it's great because it gives them ownership. And they they live and they know their body so well. That's true. Um, my husband uh, passed away from cancer. And I know that oftentimes we'd be in the same doctor's appointment. And what I took away from that appointment was totally different from what he took away from the appointment. And so not having your great journal as a 
a starting point, we kind of started a journal of our own where I would write oh. everything down that the doctor was saying, pass the journal back to the doctor to make sure I had gotten it right. And then he would give it to Justin to make sure that he understood that. And so later when he was telling, um, you know, his daughter or son or, or even a friend something that wasn't true, I would just hand him the journal so that he could look and then go, oh yeah, wait, that's not exactly the way it was. This is this is what it what it is. And then when we did need a palliative care nurse to come in, it was something that she could have everything right there when he took his medications, what he was feeling, um, all all of that. So that was um, really great. And it was just a notebook. Having seen your journal for. Um, the health journal, it is really comprehensive. Thank so. you. If you're looking to help keep your brain healthy, Neora's EHT brain formulas got you covered. It was developed after 20 years of research by Dr. Jeffrey Stock, a Princeton University professor. EHT is decaffeinated. It focuses on B vitamins to sustain and increase energy. It also is BSCG certified, and it really helps to keep the neuronal connections in your brain healthy, helping you with focus and clarity, memory and recall, and really helping to rebuild those neuronal connections that can break down with age or injury. Now back to the show. Is there any other way that we can use um, journaling as we age? I mean, even before we get a diagnosis, say. Right. I think that for me, it's part of my life. I wake up early in the morning and I will meditate. And then from there, I will get a gem through my meditation and I will write it down. And it becomes my, uh, I think, my area of discovery for myself every day as I work on different projects. Or if I'm supporting a family, um, I will journal um when I first meet them so that I understand my feelings around um, what I'm coming into that situation with so that I make sure that that stays away from the care that I'm giving my client. If that, if it's a negative or if it's been triggered, because you know, you and I are grieving, we've, we've lost a, a few loved ones. And so we have to be careful when we come into this area of palliative care that we keep our stuff to ourselves. So I use journaling on an everyday basis to make sure that I'm healthy and so that I can be really strong for my clients. That's an excellent point. You don't want to be bringing something that isn't there into a situation and making things potentially worse. So yeah. let me just uh, ask this last question. What is your favorite journaling habit or habits? Maybe there's more than one. Uh, so for me, one of my favorite journaling habits is um, writing a story. Um, I, I put it in a story context so that as if my children are going to read it later on in life, that they will understand a piece of me while I'm journaling. Uh, they can understand my heart um, and my mind at the same time. Um, but I also, I think for me too, it's very important that my when I write, I'm getting a lesson from it. Uh, I feel that we're here to learn and I'm learning all the time and I'm learning even quicker. Maybe not that I'm learning it quicker, but it's coming to me faster in sense of what I have to work on. So it just helps me become a better person. Yes. Excellent. I think that journaling is supposed to be doing that no matter if it's a health journal or your own personal journal. But I find that, um, you know, being able to share that journal with others that, you know, maybe are going through the same process that you're going through at the same time, or maybe it's somebody else that, you know, years later are starting that same path and not to mm -hmm. compare stories, but sometimes it just is insightful to see what somebody else has gone through and maybe some of the questions that they asked a doctor that perhaps they hadn't thought about. Wow, great things to really think about. Is there any last minute advice you want to give us or little tidbits of knowledge? Well, I think that writing down, um, especially at a time of a diagnosis, 
uh, is so important and to journal about it and keep um, and keep your your information to you because what happens is we when we get a diagnosis our brain kind of freezes on us and we can't remember what we've been told and it gets very convoluted very fast and I think in order to not have a crisis or um, to prevent it escalating I think writing is so important and and documenting um, and communicating I think we have to be able to communicate our feelings when we go through something like this. And I think my, my health journals gives you that. It's one of a tool that you can use. So I wish everybody that ability to do that, to be able to write and to document. Yeah, that is excellent advice. You're right. Sometimes when you get a diagnosis, usually the diagnosis is not good news and it takes your mm -hmm. brain oftentimes more than just a second or two to kind of like come back from the shock of the, wait, what, what was just said? Um, and so right. you miss whatever part of the conversation that took place after that. I appreciated in one instance, um, when a loved one was being diagnosed, we were all kind of in shock. He was, he was being diagnosed with something that typically doesn't appear for, you know, aged 30 more years than what he was being diagnosed. And the doctor just kind of like, had this very pregnant pause, allowing us to kind of go like, wait, what? What did you just say? Mm -hmm. Like, how is that possible? Isn't that something that usually hits at 65 to 85, not 25? Um, right. So it, it's, you know, not every medical professional gives you that time to, to process. So journaling is an excellent way. Shelly, this has been so insightful. I know that I have learned a lot and it really has given me a lot more to think about in terms of like just maybe keeping track of some of the things that I'm experiencing so that if something happens down the road, I have that to present to my medical team, you know, mm -hmm. that maybe will help a diagnosis. I really want to encourage all of you listeners to use this information to your advantage. Be sure to tune in for our next episode of Advantages to Aging. Do you think one of the biggest advantages to aging is all the knowledge we gain along the way? Me too. What did you learn today? Share with me in my Facebook group with the same name as this podcast, Advantages to Aging. Now hit subscribe so you don't miss all the tips to come in future episodes.